Hey folks, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we're talking about Frame.io integration, Premiere versus Avid. Let's be all about it. Okay, folks, Frame.io, it is natively integrated into Adobe Premiere because Adobe bought Frame.io. So here's how it works right here. If I wanted to, I could take this entire sequence. It's 42 minutes long, so I'm not going to, but I could put it in at the first frame, go to end, put it out at the last frame, right there, and then say upload, and upload the whole sequence. But let's just upload a little part, just for just for chuckles. Let's say right here, I'm gonna set my in, I'm gonna set my out, right here in this small part. Let's say I wanted to send this small part to my producer. And I wanted my producer to weigh in on whether Grumpy Cat was an appropriate B-roll shot for this section. And I just want this section. I can just go between the in out, right? And then I would come up here. I've got the frame IO window open. If I didn't, I could come up to window and go to review with frame IO. It's not under F for frame IO, which I wish it was because every time I'm always like, where is it? Where is it? And then I have to remember it's review with frame IO right there. Review with frame IO. That is open already. So I have the frame IO window notice frame IO window. I have it open already up here. I've already uploaded a few things to it from this project, but if I click upload right here, I'll say active sequence. Uh, but notice what are my other choices? I could upload files. I can upload from a bin directly to here. If I wanted to upload this project file, let's say to back it up or to send it to another editor who's going to do some more work on it while I'm sleeping, I can do all of that from right from here. Right. But normally, most of the time, probably I would say 99% of the time, I'm just going active sequence. Then I get this dialog box right here. You can rename it. You can, you can change the preset. Uh, right now I have it set to in and out. Uh, uh, but I could just say whole sequence or I can say work area. I have work area turned off because it bugs me. And I know people who come from After Effects love the work area because they're used to work area, but not me. I don't care for it. I've disabled it for myself. But just know that if you're a work area kind of person, you can go right down and just choose work area. Normally, I'll choose in to out. Instead of saying whole sequence, I always justify it with an in and an out because a lot of times I've got garbage on the back end of my sequence that I'm working out some problem off to the side on, and I don't want that to go with it. Uh, to the producer, right? So, uh, but we'll just say from the in and the out, which is like 22 seconds right here, we can have it render to a specific folder if we wanted to, doesn't matter. You uh, season to taste, you can say keep render file, and then it will, uh, it will keep that rendered file on your desktop. Sometimes that's super handy. You can reset the place, by the way, if you want to reset the folder where it's going, you want it to go to the desktop, you can do that and say, okay. Right, so there's all different things, all different ways that you can go with this. And then you click upload and then it would upload here. Now I've got a much shorter sequence loaded up here. This is only about a minute and a half long. Uh, and then here's the name of it. I showed you, you can rename it, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. Uh, we could keep a rendered file if we wanted to, and we're gonna say upload. Okay, now it's going, we see it's encoding right here. It's encoding right there. It's coming right in right into Premiere in real time, right? So we're gonna upload this, it's rendering the timeline, it's going right in Frame.io, and if you want, you could go to the web, when it's done, grab your link, send your link, right? So it is, it matches what's on the web when you upload it here, for those of you who haven't been using it. Okay, now let's pretend I'm the producer. The producer, you've sent the producer the link, the producer comes in on their web browser in the link, and they, they, they click through and they say, okay, they're gonna put a comment here and they're gonna say, love the countdown. Oops. And then they're gonna come over to here and they're gonna say, uh, we can't use this from the web. And they're gonna say, send, boom. And then they're gonna come over here and they're gonna say, this is the wrong hospital. Wow, I've just made so many mistakes. 
and then they're gonna say um, need to lower third her and send and then they're gonna come over here and say flawless shot I'm sure Brittany would be thrilled that people are that people are looking at that uh, and then they're look they're gonna populate here and then the producers gonna say okay I'm done and they're gonna shoot it back they're gonna just tell me they're done all their notes are on frame go ahead and exact the notes all right so now here we are in the notes and we can see them here and let me let me redock this let me redock this in here so now usually I have it big on the other side this just so you you all can see it at the same time right so now we have the notes but watch if I click on a note it moves my playhead right to that note it moves my playhead right to that note and uh, uh, and so we could just go about doing the fixes this way but I also like to bring the markers in so we're gonna click down here uh, let me show you that again we're gonna click right here where that little show comments is we're gonna hide that now we can see the comments we can click on each one and it'll do the same thing that we were just doing but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to this arrow and I'm gonna say download comments now I'm gonna go to uh, actually I'm gonna say import comments import comments and what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring all those comments in now as markers right here for me because I have overlays turned on uh you can see that here's the overlay and it's got just a, a metric shit ton of information um but they comes in here as markers i can see that we can't use this from the web i say okay i can click on that and clear it and then i can come over here click on this and say delete and now uh and now there you go so uh and that's how that is done in Premiere, I love it. I love this function. I love that you can import the comments and have them populate in here. It's why you always want to wait for your producer to be finished, though, as a heads up, because if you import the markers and then they add like five more markers and you go import markers again, it's going to import all the same markers all over again, right? That you imported last time and the new markers. So you want to make sure that your producer is for sure done before you import your markers. Uh, nothing I hate more than importing all the markers and there's a lot of them and then they add like two or three more and I'm like oh and then I delete those markers and I bring them back in and by the way you can delete all your markers at once by right clicking here and say clear markers and it will clear boom all your markers from the timeline so if that happens to you that's what I do I clear them all then I come back over here I say import markers and then boom they all populate including the new ones that your producer just put in but as comes as no surprise to anyone, it works differently in Avid. Join me. Okay, Avid, let's do importing comments from Frame.io. To get your uh, to get your sequence into Frame.io from Avid, it works differently than Premiere, obviously, because Premiere owns Frame.io. So instead of having it natively integrated, uh, what we're gonna do is, you know, I'm gonna put an in at the beginning, I'm gonna put an out at the end, and then I'm gonna export my sequence, which I've already done, and I'm gonna upload that sequence to, um, upload that video file to frame, okay? So then, uh, I'm gonna send that link to my producer, who has, I, the name of the clip is, of course, Howdy Doody, and now I regret my choice in choosing that name that I thought would be funny at the time. Okay, so I'm gonna double click on Howdy Doody. Now I can see, look, down the bottom, right? Just like normal, just like in Premiere, you can see all the different places here. Instead of clicking on one of these places and having it move my playhead in Premiere, uh, I can, um, I need to export, I need to export everything to in order to bring it into Avid. So what we do is, Right, once again, we're right here. I'm gonna double click on it. Here it is. I'm gonna come up here to there, right to there, that little download button. And I'm gonna hit that download button. And I'm gonna say download file as, by the way, if you're a Final Cut Pro X user, you can download for Final Cut Pro X as well. But we're gonna come down here for Media Composer. 
And also, by the way, you can do the same thing for Resolve right underneath it, right? So we're gonna go to Media Composer, say Download a Media Composer. Now it has downloaded those comments, right? Once we've exported that out of Frame.io, we're gonna come in here to our markers bin. If I had markers on here, let's say already, right? Doesn't matter. I just find a little blank space or it doesn't really matter. I can click even on a marker. Uh, I like to do a blank space just because I'm that way, but uh, you go over, uh, right click and go over to import markers, import markers. And now we're gonna point it to the, um, the XML, but notice it won't let me choose it. Why won't it let me choose it? Why, why gods of avid, why? Follow the bouncing ball all the way down here to show options. And instead of tab delimited text, which I don't even know what that means, we're gonna choose text and XML. Now it will let me choose it. So don't panic if it doesn't let you choose your XML. Come down here to options, change it to text XML, and then say open. Then it brings them all in, it turns them blue by default. So look at that, they're all blue by default and all the markers that I had uh, that my that my producer had put into frame are now in Avid in the exact same place as the file on Frame.io. Now I can change the track of all of these, right? I can choose them all at once. I can right click, say change track, go to V4. Now they're all up on V4, which I prefer because they're easier to see and find. And then it's just very satisfying to clear them as you go, right? What's the fastest land animal? Well. Uh, my producer asks, what's the fastest land animal? Well, folks, it's the cheetah. It's the cheetah. And if you've learned nothing from today's lesson, you've learned that. That's how you get things in from Frame.io in Avid. Enjoy. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to check my link in the bio or the link underneath if you're watching this on YouTube.